G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. With what may be a cautionary tale about cheap Chinese generators. Last week, during a period of uh, extended cloudy weather, the two-stroke generator that uh, my son got me last year ceased to function. So I went out and spent $432 buying a thing called an Exceed. VX200G, which is a 2000 watt continuous rated power 240 volt four stroke petrol electric generator. It's uh, 171 cc's, and looking at it on the outside of the box, it seemed alright. But when I first had a serious look at it, I discovered that. This rubber hose, which leads from the fuel tap down to the carburetor, had been cut to exactly precisely the correct length. However, the person who'd fitted it at the factory had stuffed it all the way down onto the brass pipe at the carburetor, and therefore there wasn't enough rubber in it for the next bloke on the assembly line to actually attach it to the fuel tank. So the rubber hose of the correct length was not connected. The next thing I noticed after a while was that this misalignment between the two halves of the heat shield around the exhaust it would mean a slightly compromised cooling flow to the exhaust and possibly a little bit of extra heat coming up and impinging on the bottom of the fuel tank. Up at the other end of the machine we find this weatherproofing rubber boot taking the output wires from the generator more properly speaking the alternator, it's actually 180 degrees turned around from the way it should be oriented and it leads the wires away from where they've got to go. The next marvellous feature is that the components inside this protective plastic box were too large for the box cover to completely enclose. There are two black modules labelled CDP and I think they control the 12 volt circuit and the 240 volt circuit and uh, they're too big for the plastic cover so I've used blue duct tape to hold the cover in place and keep the components out of any possible dust or moist airflow. I've had it for over a week and I run it for over 21 hours, 21 hours, 19 minutes. And sometimes it's been battery charging and running the hut and the TV and the lights at night. Sometimes it's been running the power tools. So I could turn this quarter cut chainsaw milled yellow box, which I had in storage, into uh, end walls for a generator kennel or a generator hut. Using this piece of folded galvanized sheet steel which came from the dump maybe 10 years ago and I've been wondering what I was going to use it for but it's now become a windproof rainproof, sunproof, thermosiphon driven heat pump cooled generator hut. And it starts and it runs and inside the little hut it's fairly quiet
so far. So good. However, there's kind of a fly in the ointment. This is the engine oil which I drained out today. 21 hours and 19 minutes. Because I wanted to uh, finish off the fuel that was in the tank last night, battery charging. And as you can see, the oil is kind of silvery, which is not a good colour for oil to be. There was once a fighter plane called a Curtis Kitty Hawk. And uh, in the Australian forces, they were often known as the Tomorrow Hawks because that was when they were going to show up. And for the people who were maintaining them, there was a little song which had a line about silverfish in the Kino. The Kino was the brand of the oil filter and the silverfish were the little flakes of bearing metal. Because the Kitty Hawks had a 1200 horsepower engine that didn't have roller bearings on the crankshaft. So, silverfish in the oil, metal fragments. And I initially thought that those metal fragments would possibly be coming from the inside of the crankcase because maybe somebody had left a spacing washer off the crankshaft because every now and then it makes a sort of a rotary grinding milling sort of a noise while it's running. Bit of a worry. And uh, just on the off chance that it wasn't aluminium flakes or bits of bearing metal because I don't think they use shell bearings these days, they tend to use roller bearings, I decided to put the oil to the magnet test. So, here we have our strangely silvery coloured oil, and when we take the magnets away from the bottle, golly gosh gee darn shucks. They are ferrous particles. It's either steel or it's iron. Filings in the crankcase oil. It's uh, either the faces of the gears on the camshaft drive or it's fragments off the needle rollers on the crankshaft. Or maybe it's scrapings off the bore from the piston rings. But uh, not really a good thing to find magnetic filings in the crankcase oil at 21 hours. Ideally, the manufacturer knew it was supposed to happen, that's why they told us to change the oil at 20 hours. Next oil change is due at 100 hours, but I think I might pull it at another 20 and see what's going on. If it's still running in another 20 hours. Otherwise, by the miracles of the Australian Consumer Protection Laws, Posi Tech Australia Proprietary Limited will be getting a telephone call from me requesting that they send me a generator that actually continues to operate. So it's got another 11 months and 3 weeks to break before it runs out of warranty time. And I have no idea at all whatsoever how anybody can possibly manufacture essentially a three horsepower electric generator with a six or seven horsepower four stroke petrol engine on it in China, ship it to Australia, transport it across the Australian roads and then sell it for 432 bucks and give a one year warranty. But that's their business plan. Not mine. I'm just the mug who hopes it's going to go. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.